The voter's roll is an important document in the electoral process because it determines whether or not you will be allowed to vote. If your name does not appear on the voter's roll, then you will not be allowed to vote. Now, you may think that, well, I'm already registered, therefore I'm going to be able to vote on polling day. Well, that may be so, but in some cases you'll be surprised when you walk up to the polling station that your name does not appear on the voters roll for that polling station, either because you have been moved to another polling station or indeed to another constituency without your knowledge. So it's very important to inspect the voters roll to make sure that you are registered at the correct polling station and that your name appears on the voters roll for that polling station and that constituency. <laughs> A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, all present or observed. I stand here this evening with great humility. Uh, the chief spokesperson of the Citizens Movement is here, uh, but he's very kindly uh, given me leave to speak um, against protocol. Uh, today is an extremely difficult night for me. Those who know me know that I'm never short of words. Know that I always have something to say, and know that I'll always say it confidently. For the first time on Sunday, I was also in church. And you know, when the offering is being given, the choir is singing, and you're scrolling through Twitter. And I was like, what's <laughs> gave the baby to whoever it was who was sitting next to me, I can't even remember. And I went and made a telephone call to the president and I said, surely not. No, Ms. Mahere, it's, it's true. I sat down, didn't go back into church. I asked the Sunday school kids to go and get my handbag so I could go home. I sat in the car. And then the journalists started calling, as they always do. The first person who called me was Mdudusi. I picked up the phone and I answered. And I couldn't get out the hello. Got multiple calls, Voice of America, Blessing Zulu, a number of people, Studio 7, wanting a comment. And those who know me know that no matter how cornered I am, I always have a comment. I had nothing to say. And I said, sorry colleagues, this is not the time. This is not the time. I fumbled together a statement on instruction. <coughs> it was the most difficult statement I've ever had to write. And it was difficult because normally when I've got difficult statements to write, who do I call? Alex, when I've got a tough line to navigate, who do I call? <coughs> Alex, when I face hostility, who do I call? Alex, and when I was preparing my address for this evening, I said to myself, you know, we're going to be in a church, let's, let's try and keep it neutral. Then I said to myself, what would Alex say about neutrals? <laughs> Alex was very clear on which side of the line he stood. He did not stand in the middle. He stood clearly for transformation and for change. He was unapologetic to work for Morgan Shangirai in the MDC. He was unapologetic about working with the MDC Alliance as it then was. He was unapologetic about working with and being a strong <coughs> pillar of the Triple C and of the citizens. And I know I speak on behalf of the president and the entire organization and indeed the wider Zimbabwean population that we are forever indebted 
for even the technical support he rendered to the movement. You'd give him a draft policy address, he'd fix it up for you. You'd give him a draft statement, he'd fix it up for you. You'd ask him, how do we navigate? Or you'd pick up the phone and say, hey, Alex, can you see that guy is coming after us? He's coming after us. Please, go after that guy. <laughs> Alex was that mid midfielder. It didn't matter. It didn't matter, Nigel, you do soccer. It didn't matter who the striker from the other side was. He was prepared to take that person on. And he did so with intellectual acuity. He did so using the law, using his expertise, and just an amazing humility and eloquence that it's going to be very difficult to match. We are very grateful for his public support. Often elites don't publicly support the movement. They want somebody to do it, but they don't want it to be themselves or their own child. Alex was happy to put himself out there. <coughs> if Mr. Timber, if Mr. Malkorne, if the old, older <laughs> members of the MDC were here, they would agree with me and say that he had a depth of understanding of issues of people and of the landscape that we're going to miss greatly. Just this week, I've been confronted with situations where I'm like, oh, let me call Alex. <coughs> I can't call Alex. Alex is that person where you're working midnight at chambers, you send him a voice note and say, look, this has happened, what do I do? He'd respond with a voice note and say, you know, Fadzi, why don't we do this? Fadzi, why don't you take this line? always, always willing to help. Now, I didn't wake up a member of the Triple C. I didn't wake up a member of the MDC. Alex believed in me when most people still treated me with a lot of suspicion. When this flag came about in 2016, Alex was one of those first responders, first believers, and the idea of citizen activism. And even though it wasn't cool, it wasn't popular, he picked up the phone and said, Fadzi, you're onto something with bond notes. And I remember writing a piece on my old blog about bond notes, and I took on another lawyer who now is a very good friend of mine. And that lawyer said, oh, how dare you, Fadzi, you're so young. Alex was like, no, 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 this is discourse. Let's engage. And that's the man that Alex was. He encouraged. He encouraged. Just the other day, my little sister forwarded me a number of inboxes that she got from Alex when I was in prison. Oh no, don't cry, Mudiwa. Your sister wouldn't want you to cry. Your sister would want you to be courageous. How is Fuzzy doing today? Did you find her in high spirits? Alex cared. He cared even beyond what people saw. He didn't do it for show. He didn't do it for, for fame. When he wrote the big Saturday read, it was with the genuine intention to inform citizens. Because there are those who know that when the citizens are not informed, they're not power, they don't have power. But when citizens are informed, when citizens do know their constitutional rights, they sit with their back straight and they're able to talk back and stand up for themselves. That is the constitutionalism he championed time and again. In 2018, when I stood as an independent, when I made the announcement, it still wasn't that popular, but Alex was the first on the phone to say, you know what, well done for standing up. Well done for putting your hand up. Alex understood that the penny drops for people at different times. It's not the fact that you were there in 2000 that counts alone. Even if you've had your awakening in 2022, he was willing to encourage you and give you the tools to take on the regime. He embraced young people. Young people, he was interested in a new age of activism and ensuring that there was another generation available to pick up the mantle. Solidarity is something he championed. 
whether we're talking of the MDC trio, whether we're talking of Marco, whether we're talking of Taku, whether we're talking of Tawandam Che, it didn't matter. If Alex was around today, he'd be saying, where is more blessing? That is Alex for you. Now, even as I sat with colleagues thinking about the best way to, to commemorate of these five days, the life of Alex, I was reminded that the, the task ahead of us is an enormous one. The work that Alex started is not yet finished. We are still the Zimbabwe, notwithstanding the great constitution of 2013 that he helped author, that the police will say, no, you can't have a big Saturday march. Well, that's rather odd. What does Section 57 say? They don't care. They say to you, no, you can't peacefully light a candle for Alex Magaisa in the park because you know what? Repression. What this tells us is that we need to pick up very strongly the fight that Alex was a brave part of. There is still a lot of work to be done to ensure that we get to a new great Zimbabwe. And the question we all need to ask ourselves is what can I do? How can I be an active citizen? How can I fight for freedom? How can I raise up my voice and join the others? How can I ensure that I register to vote? And I think the biggest gift we could give to Alex is to deliver one day in Zimbabwe where freedom, where politics, where believing different are not dirty words, where you don't have to hide the fact that you're wearing yellow because it's dangerous. You don't have to hide the fact that you believe that the government is getting it wrong. It's Zimbabwe where we don't have to hide the fact that we're political and be ashamed of it. Nothing I'm saying there is new. It's all contained in the constitution that Wama Gaisa helped author. My brother, my friend, my helpmate, uh, you, you didn't have to help me, but you did, and I'm so grateful. And to the Magaisa family, I extend on behalf of millions of citizens whom he touched, whether it's Mazizi, whether it's the Yellow Movement, whether it's, you know, Zimbabweans far and wide in rural Zimbabwe, in urban areas, in the ghetto, in the universities, even people as far as the United Kingdom. I had a friend the other day who said to me, Fitzai, how did you know Alex? He taught me company Lord Kent. This is someone I'd worked with in The Hague. I don't think we yet realize the enormity of the void that Alex left. He touched Zimbabweans here and abroad, but he also touched people from other nations as well. Zorora um, Murugari, we can't question God, but I, I really pray that he, he rests in peace. Thank you.